This is One on One. This project has been haunting me over the last 10 or 12 years since I first saw the CD in a, in a bin at a record store in LA. It's funny because I did not realize that it was 50 years after the original recording. I had about 20 titles in mind because I did not want it to just be Money Jungle. I wanted it to have something afterwards to differentiate it from the original. Provocative and Blue just came to me at the 11th hour. Provocative meaning thought-provoking, stimulating, exciting. And all of the songs on the CD are based in blues, the blues form. Um, with different twists and turns. The essence, I think, of the blues is there. The essence of Duke Ellington for me is there because his melodies were so strong. There she is for the first time on One on One here at the uh, New Jersey Performing Arts Center, Terry Lynn Carrington, a Grammy award-winning artist, drummer, composer, band leader, and professor at Berklee College of Music. How are you doing? I'm great. Mind if I plug Money Jungle, yeah, Provocative great. in Blue, it's your new CD? That is. Describe it. Uh, well, I'd covered a Duke Ellington CD, Money Jungle, and I'd featured um, Max Roach on drums and Charles Mingus on bass, and um, came out exactly 50 years ago this year. And yeah, I, Money Jungle's got a big message there, because uh, describe it when it first came out, then when you heard it, because it's a big theme, no? Well, I mean, I think there's not a lot written about what Duke Ellington meant, you know, there's not a whole lot uh, written about it, there weren't a lot of interviews. So I think it's up to the person's interpretation. What about um, yours? I mean, I think that uh, I, I had some speeches about the economy included, and um, I have some songs, like titles like Grassroots, and uh, some original songs that I added to it. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it's just trying to make people think about, you know, art and commerce and... Um, Complicated? Art and commerce? <laughs> Chris, it's funny, Christian McBride, who you know well. Yes, very right? well. He's on my CD. We talked about the confluence, if you will, the challenges, mm -hmm. art and commerce. Well, I think at a certain point, you know, when you're an artist, you have these, these things to balance because, of course, you know, you want to make money like everybody else and you want your art to be accepted in a large way, you know, in a global way. Um, but then you want to be true to your artistic nature. So I think we constantly struggle with that, um, which is a point, you know, you're driven to do your art. And if you can figure out a way that a lot of people like it too, well then you've won, you know. Duke Ellington, what don't we know about him that we should? He didn't like the word jazz. <laughs> what? <laughs> I what found do you mean? Interesting. One of the greatest jazz musicians of all time did not like the word jazz. Yeah, he said that uh, jazz uh, means freedom of expression. He said we stopped using that word in 1947. Does the word, what does the word jazz mean to you? Well, I take from the, I did a lot of playing with Wayne Shorter over the last uh, 20 years or so. Matter of fact, I played with him a few days ago. And um, he says jazz means no category. Duke Ellington says it means freedom of expression. Jack DeJanet says it's multidirectional. Um, I did a CD called Jazz is a Spirit. Jazz is a spirit. Is a spirit. Yeah, so I think it's, it's we're all like looking for other terms, you know, but in the, at the end, you have to categorize it as something. Mm -hmm. So improvise music. But yes, I like freedom of expression. I think that's great. Where'd you grow up? Uh, Medford, Massachusetts. Seven years of age, you become, I don't want to say obsessed, but you got into what, drums? Sure. Uh, well, How? first it's saxophone when I was five, and then uh, seven, my dad played drums and saxophone, and my grandfather also was a drummer. In fact, he passed away playing drums uh, with Gene Emmons right before I was born. And um, so I feel like, you know, his energy transferred to me somehow. Music all around you. Mm -hmm. Musical family. Press, did you feel any pressure to have music be your professional life? Pressure, no. It was always what I knew. It's the only thing I knew to do. The only um, thing you knew to do? Yeah, and I did well in school. I graduated third in my class in high school, and um, I didn't have any other desire, so. Describe the, it's interesting with your background because um, what's interesting to me is that one of the projects, the Music Mosaic, which won the 2012 Grammy Award, mm -hmm. Best Jazz mm -hmm. um, album. Jazz vocal. Jazz vocal album. Describe that particular 
album. What makes that different from any other? Well, uh, it was an honest, uh, an honest statement. I have 21 different women on the record and my whole career, which has been a good 30 years or more, uh, people have been trying to get me to play with other women and I play with Herbie Hancock and Wayne Shorter and the greatest you know, names in jazz stand gets. Um, and I shied away from playing with women because it seemed you know, like I only want to play with the greatest musicians, period, whether they're female or male. And then one day I looked up and realized um, I was playing with a lot of women and I didn't even know that it was happening. So I said I wanted to do a project that celebrated this because finally I felt like uh, there was a larger pool and more women that were very serious in jazz. And then I also play with a lot of vocalists, mm. Diane Reeves, Dee Dee Bridgewater, Cassandra Wilson. They're all on the CD. It's funny, well. I saw Cassandra Wilson right here at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center several mm -hmm. years ago. It's funny how this place, uh, Place is a great place to perform. Yeah, I know. I'm playing here in February. <laughs> Good stuff, right? Yeah. Finally, talk to me about your teaching. Um, well, I decided I wanted to slow down a little bit from all the touring and uh, give back. I had an honorary doctor from Berklee College of Music, which is my alma mater, and uh, I wanted to move home and see my folks, so I decided to uh, teach at Berklee. Love it. I do. I do. It keeps what me. What do you uh, love about? Well, it keeps me current, you know, so being around the young, younger musicians. Uh, when I'm working with the good ones, I really learn from them, you know, probably as much as they learn from me uh, in a different kind of way, but it keeps me uh, current. I, I realize my playing is, is developing differently and I'm growing in, in different directions. I play a lot with Esperanza Spaulding, who had just graduated and started teaching there when I started teaching there. And um, we have a trio together. We're getting ready to tour Europe. And um, I'm on our last two records, and playing with people like that, I realize you know, how, how I've grown since I've been to Berkeley. I'll tell you what, there have been a group of musicians, or teachers, artists, who we had sitting in this chair for this one-on-one -on -one series at the Performing Arts Center. It's just Not only are they talented and special in what they do, but their passion for bringing it to others, teaching it. Mm -hmm. Mentoring others is special as well, and you're one of them, so I want to thank you. Nice. Terry Lynn Carrington, Grammy Award winning artist, uh, drummer, composer, band leader, professor at Berkeley College of Music. Um, I want to thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Great. Stay with us. We'll be back from the New Jersey Performing Arts Center right after this. Thank you very much. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC, Hackensack University Health Network, New Jersey's Credit Unions, Cone Resnick, Fedway Associates Inc., New Jersey Natural Gas, and by Berkeley College. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.